everybody. How are you? Happy summer for some of you. Happy almost summer for the rest of you guys. We made it. We're almost in summer or we're in summer. I miss seeing you guys in person, but I love seeing you guys today online and I love seeing you during small groups. So hopefully, hopefully we'll all be together soon. Fingers crossed. We can be praying for that. We are jumping into a new series. We spent the last five weeks talking about the big picture. We went through the story of Joseph and learned all of these different things through that story. And we're entering into a new series called In My Opinion. In My Opinion. Today we're going to talk about how choosing words can help people rather than hurt people. This whole series is about what we do and how we speak. So it's a great way for us to think about the words we say and the things we do. So again, in my opinion, is that new series. Today we're talking about choosing words that help people. So question to start off with, do you guys have opinions? If there's one thing we have, it's opinions, right? All of us have opinions about things. You're either into ketchup or mustard, or maybe both. You either like dogs or cats, right? You either love Avengers or you hate Avengers. You either like pickles or you're wrong. We all have opinions about stuff. But what happens when those opinions turn into judgment? And what happens when that judgment turns into using words that are hurtful and harmful to others? That's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about what it looks like for us to choose words that are kind and building rather than choosing words and judging people in our opinions in a way that hurts them, in a way that hurts others. As we dive in, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who created us, that you are a God who loves us, that you are a God who is here with us, even in the midst of the chaos of this season. And Lord, we just thank you for being a God who has made us each uniquely amazing. Lord, as we reflect on what it means to choose good words, we ask that you would speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord, that we would think of people that we have spoken unkindly to, that we have uh, used bad words against. And Lord, we ask that you would just help us make decisions so that we can help others and we can use good language and support others through our words rather than using our opinions as judgment. Lord, we thank you for being a God who is awesome and great and mighty, and we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. So I have a question for you guys. Have you ever been hurt by something somebody else said? Have you ever been hurt by somebody and the words they've used? I think if most of us were honest, we would say, yeah, there have been times in our lives, whether it be from family members or friends or coaches or teachers, where they say something that hurts our feelings or hurts our heart. The follow-up question to that is, have you ever said something that hurt somebody else? Have you ever said something that hurts somebody else? If we're being honest to the first question, yeah, most of us have been hurt by somebody. And if we were honest to that second question, I would assume that most of us, not all of us, but most of us would say, yeah, I I have said something that has hurt somebody else. Whether that's saying something to their face or something that's behind their back. I know I have hurt people by the things they say. Some of them I I hurt to their faces. Some of them I said things behind their back, right? If we were honest, we would know that sometimes we say things that don't honor God and aren't great. Sometimes our words are harmful. But we know that we don't have to live in that harmful type or we don't have to say things that are harmful. We can choose to use our voice for good. We can choose to say things out of love, and that's what we're talking about today, choosing words that feel good. Most of the times, as I was thinking about when I have said things that weren't great or when I've said things that were harmful, I was thinking about what situations those words or those things came up in, and I came to the conclusion that I have said bad things about people when I've been gossiping. 
And I imagine that as middle schoolers, we're probably fluent in gossip, right? We say things about classmates. We say things about teachers and parents and families in a way that we know isn't great. And gossip is a part of our culture. You watch TV shows and you see gossip. You listen to music and the songs are written about somebody else. It's gossip. Maybe your parents gossip. You've probably heard me gossip, right? We are inflicted with this need to gossip, and we know ultimately that those gossiping words aren't helpful. So we're going to talk about today why we gossip, why we say these harmful things, and then we're going to look at what the Bible says or how we can turn against that gossip and speak good words rather than bad words. So why do we gossip? Now, I'm not like a scientist or a sociologist or an anthropologist that studies gossip. They probably are out there. I'm not one of them. But as I was thinking about, okay, why do we gossip? I came up with a few ideas that I think probably you would agree with. So the first reason I think that we gossip is because our insecurities move us to say something bad about people. Our insecurities move us to gossip. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes in school, I did not always feel like the most popular kid, or I didn't have the most friends, or a friend had something that was cooler and I wanted it, right? My own insecurities about what I didn't have or what other people has moved me to say things against somebody else. My insecurities about what I have, what I look like, what I want, moved me to saying harmful words. So maybe some of us gossip because we have insecurities. Maybe some of us gossip because we want to bond with our friends, right? We're in a group at lunch, or we were at a group at lunch, or maybe we're on small group chat, or we're hanging out with our friends somewhere, or our teammates somewhere, and everybody else is talking about that one person. And so we want to be a part of that group, and so we decide to jump in and have little conversations with our friends. As some of you guys know, I was a water polo player in high school and college. And in high school, we had to take bus trips to places to, like, go play games. So we would drive an hour to go play a game. And those conversations in that bus were full of gossip. And because I wanted to be a part of the team in a new way, I decided to join in the gossip. So it wasn't because I was insecure. It was because I wanted to bond with my teammates. So some of us gossip and say bad words or say bad things because we're insecure. Sometimes we say it because we want to be a part of the group. Sometimes we say it. The third reason we say it is because we find it fun. Maybe you're like, oh, I don't think so. And that's okay. But for some of us, being the center of attention when we gossip or making jokes at somebody else's expense, we find it fun. And listen, I've been there. If you feel like that's you. I'm not happy to say it, it's not great, but I've been there. We think it's fun to elevate ourselves above others. We think it's fun to be the center of attention. Sometimes gossiping happens because we think it's fun. So sometimes we gossip because we're insecure. Sometimes we gossip because uh, we want to be a part of the community. Sometimes we gossip because it's fun. Sometimes we gossip because it's competitive, right? That person has something, like we said before. Sometimes we gossip because it's true. We don't even think that it's gossip because you're just pointing out a fact that that person smells bad or that that person doesn't have good grades and they're dumb or that that person doesn't have the things that you have. All of these different things, all of these different ways that we gossip are ways that we speak harmfully or wrongfully about somebody or about a group. All of us have gossiped. It's a part of our community. It's a part of our lives. But God calls us to not use our words harmfully, but to use our words in a helpful way. To use our words in a way that build other people up rather than tearing them down. To use our words out of love and generosity, rather than out of this judgmental opinion. So we know why we gossip or why this happens. We're going to look now towards ways that we understand, ways that we can turn against this gossip, and instead use our good, our words for good, use our opinion for good. So today we're going to look at a few different Bible verses. One of them is going to be in Ephesians. The other one is going to be in Mark. And both of these uh 
books of the Bible show us ways that we can use our words for good. So the first one we're going to look at is out of Ephesians. Now we have read through Ephesians a little bit in middle school. Ephesians is written by this dude named Paul. He's in the New Testament. He wrote a bunch of the books in the New Testament after the gospel. So you have the gospels, right? And then you have a bunch of different books. And most of those, some of those were written by Paul. And Ephesians is one of those books. Paul wrote a bunch of letters to different churches throughout Greece. And each of those letters, or some of those letters, have become books of the Bible, sprinkled in the New Testament after the gospel. So we read in this book of Ephesians. Now, this Ephesians book was written to a church in Ephesus. Super nerdy. You can actually still go to Ephesus. It's really cool. You should go. Anyway, Paul, this dude, is writing to this church in Ephesians. So we read in, or in Ephesus. So we read in Ephesians 4, verses 29. Paul says... Do not use foul or abusive language. So in case we were wondering how the Bible feels about our words, I think this verse is very short, but it tells us. Paul writes to the Ephesians, don't use foul or abusive language. Now when Paul uses this phrase, foul and abusive language, it's kind of weird to us, right? What does that mean? He wasn't just talking about like curse words or harsh words or mean names, things that we normally think of. What he was talking about was talking and using our words in a way that hurts others, in a way that breaks down people, in a way that damages friends and relationships. In fact, the, the Greek word, so the, the Old Testament or the New Testament was written originally in Greek and we translate it to English. The original Greek word that was used for foul and abusive is the word that we use for rotten. Right? I was going to bring in a rotten banana, but it was too rotten to bring in to, to show you guys. So, But we all know what that looks like. A rotten banana, a rotten apple. Have you guys ever had those rotten oranges that get like the green fuzz on them? Super cute. We know what it looks like to be rotten. And Paul tells us, one, that our language can be rotten. That we can say things that hurt others in a way that turns that into like mush. Paul tells us our, our words can be rotten, but that we shouldn't and shouldn't use those words. We shouldn't and we can't use those words. See, friends, our opinion can turn into judgment. And that judgment can turn into gossip. And that gossip can turn rotten really fast. And ultimately, that rotten language is a reflection of how we see and love other people. Our second kind of verse for today comes out of the book of Mark. Now, Mark, again, is the one of the four Gospels. So you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are the story of the life of Jesus written by different dudes. And in Mark, we read this. We read, it's not what goes into your body that defiles you or makes you rotten. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. You're defiled by what comes from your heart. So we have Paul in the, in the New Testament in Ephesians saying, don't use harmful words. And we have Mark here saying, those rotten words, those things that hurt us, those things that we say that hurt others, those come from our hearts, right? It goes back to that gossip out of insecurity and that gossip of needing to be a part of a team. What we say comes from our heart. And so when we say bad things, it doesn't mean we're bad people or that we have a rotten heart, but it means that we aren't loving these people to the fullest, that we aren't showing them God's love or God's grace to the fullest. When you talk badly about somebody with the intention of hurting them or gossiping about them, it shows us that we have a rotten part in us somewhere. It doesn't mean we are rotten. It just means we have a little bit of us that has a little bit of nurturing to do and loving to do. When we use bad words, it means that we need to check our hearts and see where that is coming from. Because we know that just as God has loved us so much, God is calling us to love our friends and our family a lot. And to use good words and kind words rather than words that hurt. Paul, in a later section in Ephesians, after talking about using language that is good and using language that isn't rotten, says this. 
In Ephesians 4, 29, Paul writes, Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Let everything you say, everything, right? Not just the thing you say to your parents or your teachers when you get called on or your small group leader to make yourself look good or your boss or your grandparents, not just those, everything you say. That conversation you have with your friend uh, when you text them. That conversation you have with your sibling when they're annoying you. That conversation you have in your head with your parents when you want to yell at them. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. So that your words will be an encouragement. Let everything you say not come from an opinion and a judgment, but come from love and hope and excitement for what that is happening in that person's life. We can use words that help others rather than choosing words that hurt others. Now here's what I don't want you to hear today. I don't want you to hear that if you have said something bad, you're a bad person. Not true. I don't want you to hear that if you, after you leave here, think of something bad or say something bad, that that means you're not loved by God. Not true, right? I think everybody listening to this, certainly your parents hanging around you, certainly me, uh, have these times where we have bad words come up in our minds, where we want to gossip or we want to say something. And and that's going to happen. So thinking bad words or having them come up in your mind doesn't mean that you're not following God or that you are a bad individual. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that sometimes we find ourselves in the opportunity to make the choice of what language we're going to use. I can make the choice to talk badly about my mom on the phone with my sister because my sister is already doing that. I can make the choice to make fun of that one kid in our school who's just a little weird. I can make the choice to, rather than saying thank you to my parents, say, oh, I'm over it. We're going to be faced with choices, and it's in those choices that we can choose to make a good choice. That we can choose to make the choice to love others and to support others and to build others up with our language rather than using words to hurt others. So in this series, we are talking about how our opinions and our judgments affect us and affect those around us. And we are going to today think about and reflect on the ways that our language can hurt or help others. So what's the challenge for this week? Well, I imagine at some point this week, I'm going to face the opportunity to gossip. You are probably going to face the opportunity to gossip. Maybe your parents are going to face the opportunity to gossip. At some point this week, we are all going to have a situation where we have to make a choice. You can choose to feed into the gossip and to feed into the bad language and the bad words, or you can say no. And if you're like, oh, yeah, Kylie, sure, but like, how do I say no? Well, here's the way you say no. And I've been trying to practice this this week. When something happens in my life, when I'm talking to friends or family, or when a thought comes up in my mind where I'm like, oh, this would be really funny to make fun of my brother in this way, what I've been doing is I've just been saying no. When I'm on the phone and I'm talking to somebody and they want to gossip about a friend, all I say is, yeah, I'm not going to talk about her today. Or, yeah, I'm not going to talk about him today. Or maybe you're with your parents and you want to talk about something your sibling did. Yeah, I'm I'm just not going to talk about them today. You're going to come up with an opportunity this week, no doubt, to choose harmful words versus helpful words. So your challenge this week, both students and parents, is to find a way to say no to the harmful and say yes to the helpful. Say no to the harmful and yes to the helpful so that our language, just like Ephesians calls us, our language can be good and helpful. Friends, we all have opinions Sometimes those opinions turn into judgment. Sometimes that judgment turns into gossip. And that gossip can turn into things that are harmful. But because we have the love and amazingness of God in our hearts and in our minds, we can choose words that are helpful, not harmful. And so your challenge this week is to choose the helpful. See you guys next week.